Oh, y'all ready for a message? Yeah. Glory to God. Father God, I just ask you to touch each and every one of us. Prepare us right now. Ooh, let us be touched by your word. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. 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 So how many of y'all have ever felt forgotten? Ah, okay. How many of you have never felt forgotten? Yeah. Never felt forgotten. <laughs> amen. We've all felt forgotten somewhere along the line, right? During our Bible study... Uh, God for the rest of us, um, which has been powerful. I wish it was like 20 weeks long instead of six. Amen. Next week is our last week. If you want to join us at 9.30, uh, we're going to wrap it up. But it's, I know it's got to be a grand finale. It's just been awesome. Uh, basically, Vince goes to <laughs> Sin City. I mean, he leaves a comfortable place and he goes where it makes no sense at all to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ and what an out of the, outside the box church. Today's message is going to be about God is not only for the rest of us, but God is for the forgotten. Amen. God is for the forgotten. That's why I asked you, do you do, some of y'all feel forgotten right now. This is going to touch your hearts if you came prepared, if you came expecting. Y'all know what lepers are? Yeah. We lepers. Well, there's a, a community in Molokai, which is one of the beautiful islands of Hawaii, called, and I'm probably going to butcher it, Kailau Papa. And Kailau Papa is beautiful. Think about it. It's just, that's, just, that's pretty, isn't it? I mean, when you see this, how many of y'all have not been to Hawaii? Okay, let me go the other way. How many of you have been to Hawaii? Okay. I haven't had any chocolate-covered nuts in a while from Hawaii. Just, just. <laughs> anyway, it's beautiful, and you just really want to go, right? But it wasn't always that way at Kailau, Kailau Papa, at Molokai. It wasn't that way. In the 1840s, in fact, it was a colony of lepers. Leprosy had broke out in Hawaii, and so society decided what they needed to do, just like back in the Bible days. We need to separate them from the rest of society and they became forgotten can you just place yourself there I mean the 1840s now this is not back in the Old Testament this is not back in the New Testament this is not over 2,000 years ago it's 1840 it's 150 years ago 170 years ago y'all getting this right and this 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 leprous colony in uh, Kela Papa was where no one wanted to go now we look at it today and you say man it's beautiful I'd love to be there so you can picture this, right? Are y'all getting this visual? Well, there was this guy named Damien. Father Damien felt moved. He felt moved by God, and so he wrote his superiors, and he says, how do he say it? I want to sacrifice myself for the poor lepers, end of quote, in his letter. And his superior said, no, you're not going. Like Vince says in the Bible study, I hate practical people, <laughs> you know, because it's just not practical to send you into your death. That's a death sentence, right? Y'all understand, that's a death sentence. But he was persistent. And eventually they finally said, whatever, you're going to bug us every month with your letters. You're imploring us, you're beseeching us, you're begging us. So they sent him. And so he started living among the lepers. Father Damien, he showed up. He, he moved into Kailau Ke Papa of Molokai. And he became like one of them. He lived among them. He poured his life out to them. He built homes for them to live in. He, at the same time, he built coffins to bury them in. He was there till it was going to be over. And he always spoke to them about the love of Christ. Amen? Amen? He let them know about God's love. And he explained that God is for the lepers. God is for the forgotten. They had been forgotten by family, forgotten by society. As far as they're concerned, they weren't worth Worthy of being seen. That's why they were sent off there. And he says, you are not forgotten by God. And one day he began his sermon different than he'd ever begin before. He says, we lepers. And their lives were changed. Everybody in the congregation and the whole community knew that he had become one of them. He lived among them. And he's going to die like them. He had truly become one of them. And Father Damien did die at the age of 55. 
For those of you who want to follow along, we're going to go to Malachi. It's the last book in the Old Testament. And we're going to look at Malachi 1-2. And he's, God's saying, I have always loved you. I have loved you. And that's what we're learning in our Bible study about God for the rest of us. Is God loves all of us. And that's the theme of the Bible too. The theme of the Bible is a love letter from God to you and me. It's a love letter. And he, he's saying it. It's, it's just, it's like a scarlet thread from Genesis all the way to Revelation. The blood of Jesus shed for you. Because I love you. It's a love letter. You should read it like that. Because that's what it is. But then in Malachi 2.1, it changes a little bit. He says, And now you priests, this warning is for you. God said some pretty harsh things in the Word, hasn't He? He says some pretty harsh things. And this message is from God to the religious leaders. And we're going to see that it's harsh. And a lot of times we... Some of us get this attitude, or we've even been taught, unfortunately, that God is out to get us, and He's so harsh. But you know, our God, He loves us. Unconditional love for you and me. God has compassion for those that are lost. God, <laughs> He loves those that are hurting. He speaks to us and He encourages those of us that are, are hurting or in trouble. He, he speaks to us that are confused and broken. God's there for us because God's for all of us, for the forgotten. He's even there for us that are trapped in the sin that you're trapped in right now that no one else knows about. You're in bondage to it. You're trying to break it, but God's giving you the compassion. He has so much grace and mercy. He's there for you right now. I'm not talking about you're living a lifestyle and praising, you know. I'm talking about that you're trying to break it, but it just keeps dragging you down. God's there for you. You're not forgotten. God says harsh things to people that hold the power of religion in their hands. Over and over and over again. He's talking to the priests, folks. He's talking to the religious leaders who are supposed to be helping you, but are not. Supposed to be bringing you closer to God, but driving you further away. Any of y'all been almost preached into hell? <laughs> My son raised his hand. I want to talk to him after church because I'm not sure. <laughs> Glory to God. Malachi 2.2. 2. This is harsh. I will send a... Uh, says, uh, if you do not listen and if you do not resolve to honor My name, says the Lord Almighty... I will send a curse on you and I will curse your blessings. Yes, I have already cursed them because you have not resolved to honor me. Wow. I'm glad he was talking to the religious people. <laughs> Hello. God's talking to the religious leaders and they were, they were out giving blessings. Man. I hope, I hope there's some religious leaders watching this on YouTube later that's going, wow, I need, to re I need to regroup today. Because so often it's the same thing. Passing out blessings and shining their light for the Lord, but didn't bring somebody to the Lord. And what it's saying here is you're driving them away. You have not resolved to honor me. Listen to these last words in Malachi. This is the last words of the Old Testament in Malachi 4, 5, and 6. See, I will send the prophet Elijah to you before the great and dreadful day of the Lord comes. He will turn the hearts of the parents to their children and the hearts of the children to their parents or else I will come and strike the land to total destruction. Those are God's last words to the religious leaders of the day. And then there was silence. I asked the Bible study group if they'd ever had the silent treatment. Had you ever given the silent treatment to your spouse or received the silent treatment? When we talked about how you have to humble yourselves to break that silence. One of y'all got to. <laughs> silence for 400 years! Y'all getting this? I think God was waiting for some priests to become humble. So often... So often they're on fire and they're 
They're, they're passing out their blessings and they're going right along doing it without God. That's why it was silent. That's why it was so quiet. 400 years, we don't know anything. And then Matthew kicks off and we have the New Testament. The silence was due to the religious leaders. But we have to think about everybody else. Like you and me, we're normal people. Hello. I'm just a pastor. I'm not I'm talking about real religious leaders. Amen. <laughs> Way up there. We're normal people. They must have felt forgotten. 400 years? Those that are praying? Come on, some of y'all can relate to this. And not getting an answer? Some of those doing what you're pretty sure God wants you to do, and you're not sure if you should still be doing it? Some of you was on fire for a ministry, and now you're kind of like, I don't know if I want to keep doing it. Hello? Hello? Silence! You're not hearing nothing. And you're wondering. God's waiting for somebody to become humble. Whew, that was powerful. That wasn't in my notes. Some that even believed and thought they had an intimate relationship with God. Wanted to hear from God. Some of y'all can relate to this. You're wanting to hear from God, but there's silence. Some of us are probably even thinking, well, maybe we're just not worth His attention. Maybe we've been forgotten. And then God showed up. He moved from heaven to earth. Amen? Amen. That's powerful. I mean, he, he, he left heaven. I can't put it in the words Vince did. It was pretty powerful this morning, the way he did that. Wish I could remember. I'm going to have to watch it again. But I like how the message version puts it. Uh, how, how this really is paraphrased by, it's the word became flesh and blood and moved into the neighborhood. I like that. He moved into the neighborhood. He became one of us. The Bible describes Jesus in this way in Philippians 2, 6 through 8. Who being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped. Whew. But made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant being made in human likeness, like you and me, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death. Even death on a cross. It's as if God's saying, we humans. Okay, y'all didn't get... Father Damien said, we lepers. There we go. And now God says, we humans. You see, you see that parallel? Because Jesus lived here with us and went through everything that we go through. He lived among us. He died among us. He became one of us. That is powerful. It became clear to humanity that they had not been forgotten. And you can hang on to that right there. We are not forgotten. For God to come down here and live in the flesh among us and to die with us. To die and take all the sins onto the cross with Him for us in the flesh. Hello. All our sins. Hello. There's a story in the Bible in John chapter 4 that starts out uh, 4, 3 through 4 where Jesus... He left Judea and departed again into Galilee and he must needs, that's the King James Version, he must needs go through Samaria. And some of the versions say he needed to go or, and he went through. And don't miss this because so many of y'all don't understand. Look at this. This, this is what it's talking about. The Jews and the Samaritans hated each other. Jesus was a Jew. You all know that, right? The Jewish carpenter. It's called Jewish carpenter because he was a Jew. He was Jewish. Amen. Jews would not go through Samaria. You see Sychor. That Sychor is where Jacob's well is, where he's going to meet this woman. Amen. And he says, I must needs go. Don't you know those disciples were going, is he crazy? Mm -hmm. yeah. We're Jews. We can't go through that land. 
They went through so much trouble, folks. The Jews would go east over Jordan and go north till they got past Samaria and then go west across the Jordan. They had to cross the Jordan twi twice. Y'all getting this right? That's spit on you. I'm sorry. <laughs> Y'all getting this right? Yeah. And then they go into Galilee. <laughs> they went around. And Jesus said, no, I must needs go. You ever thought about doing something? For the Lord and the people next to you is going, you can't go through Samaria. I want to go do this. I want to go do that. No, you don't need to do that. Well, the disciples didn't say it to him, I'm sure, but they were thinking it. But he must needs go because he needed to go see somebody that had been forgotten. <clears throat> a woman that was living a life that she shouldn't be living. She'd been sleeping around with all the men and the women hated her. He knew, Jesus knew to meet her at the well when nobody else would be at the well. She went at high noon when nobody else would be there. Why? She didn't want any confrontations with the women that get the water early in the morning. Y'all getting this? Jesus must needs go because He is for the forgotten. Man. I'm glad I went over this so many times by myself because that's the first time I made it through that without lying, without, without crying. I mean, that's so powerful. I must needs go. He went straight through into a land that's forsaken to the Jews to go to that one individual that's, that knows she's been forgotten. Praise God indeed. I'll bet pretty quickly anybody that was following Jesus knew he was for the forgotten. Because of that, amen? In Mark 1, we meet a man with leprosy. And back then, it was just like in 1840, but back then it was even worse. As soon as you had the signs of leprosy, you were separated from society. So you were what? You were forgotten by society, by family. You were removed from it. Lepers knew that they had to keep their distance. But in Mark chapter 1, a man with leprosy comes to him. You can look it up. Mark 1.40 the man comes to him and says, if you are willing. I got part of it up here. He comes to Jesus and he says, if you're willing. He doesn't say if you're able. He knows God's able. What he's really in the back of his mind is, everybody else says I'm not worthy. Everybody else has forgotten me. I am a forgotten one. I am not worthy. I wonder if Jesus really is special enough that he cares about me since I am forgotten. And Jesus does what? He touches the untouchable. He loves the unlovable. Y'all getting this? Filled with compassion and love, grace and mercy, Jesus Christ touches him. Touches him. He says, I am willing. I am a God for the forgotten. You feel forgotten? Do you? So if you feel forgotten, I'm assuring you today that you're not forgotten by God. You're not forgotten by the Lord Jesus Christ. And He wants to touch you right where you're sitting right now. Because all of there is no one in here one of two things. You either feel forgotten right now, and I don't know if it's forgotten by family, forgotten by co-workers, forgotten by God. Some of y'all are in here thinking you've forgotten by God because your prayers ain't being answered. Or, here's the kicker, if you don't feel that way, then the other way is that you know someone that feels forgotten. Amen. There's no one in here that doesn't feel one or the other way. It's impossible. You either feel forgotten right now in some way, shape, or form, or you know someone that feels forgotten. Isaiah 49, 13 through 16. This is how God answers the people that felt like they were forgotten. And He says, Shout for joy, you heavens. Rejoice, you earth. Burst into song, you mountains. For the Lord comforts His people and will have compassion on His afflicted ones. But Zion said, The Lord has forsaken me. The Lord has forgotten me. <clears throat> Can a mother forget the baby of her breast and have no compassion on the child she has born? Though she may forget, I will not forget you. Praise God. See, I have engraved you 
on the palms of my hands. Your walls are never before me. God says, forgotten. Can your mama forget you? Maybe so, but I can't. I have not forgotten. You pick that up or I'll probably go be on Funniest Home Videos later. <laughs> and I know that what I just said is reassuring to some of y'all. That touched you and you're like, wow, I got to hold on to that. And there's others saying, hey, I feel forgotten by God and I felt that by God and I have felt forgotten for a long time, Monty. <laughs> and it, you're not helping me out a whole lot here. But I understand that too. And check it out. That's actually pretty good sometimes. Amen. It's like, oh, don't drop me there. Don't tell me that. Just go out and stay forgotten. Well, this is pretty powerful. See, there's a... Everybody in here knows how to walk. But we didn't just get up and walk. And Daddy didn't want to let go. But he knew he had to. <coughs> Don't miss this. This, this. These two analogies are so powerful. You're holding... He, he, when he was real little, he held onto my leg and I walked real slow. But at some point I would reach down and pull his arm off and then he would do what? He'd fall. He would fall. But Daddy knew he was going to fall. And eventually he'd take two or three steps and then fall. And eventually five or six steps he'd fall. And eventually Dad was sorry that he taught him how to walk because he couldn't find him. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you, do you see what I'm saying? Bicycle. That's even harder. Daddy's taught you to walk and now he wants you to ride a bicycle. And you're on that bicycle. And you want him to let go, but you don't want him to let go. And you're pedaling so good and everything's straight because daddy's back there holding on to the, the little seat. And finally dad lets go, knowing you're not going to go very far. And you go down hard. And you get mad at daddy. <laughs> I'm not going to do this no more. That is during the time that you feel forgotten by God. See, it's during that time that you're really growing up. <coughs> it's during the times that you fall that you grow more than when you're on fire. Listen, brothers and sisters, when you give your life to the Lord, and most of you remember when you give your life to the Lord, you're on fire for God. You're on fire for intimate relationship with other brothers and sisters in Christ. You're on fire to pray. You're on fire to stay in the Word of God. But something happens. It takes a few weeks, sometimes a few months. You don't understand it. And all of a sudden, you feel forgotten. Something's going wrong. You don't feel as hungry for the Word. What is God backed off a little bit. Dad backed off to see how you do on your own. You're getting this, right? Now you're getting this. That's how we grow. <laughs> because I'm going to tell you, and y'all, you're lying to yourselves if you don't agree with me. <clears throat> when everything's going on fire and you just gave your life to the Lord and you're just, you're just fellowshipping with all your brothers and sisters and, and you're just on fire for the ministry you just started belonging to or the one you even started and everything's just going great, you think it was you. That's Mother Nature. That's just us. God backs off to see how far you can walk before you fall down. That's when we grow. And it's during those times that some people get so far out that they just totally give up. There are people that don't know how to ride a bicycle today, folks. Me. <laughs> Glory. <laughs> C.S. Lewis said in the first days of spiritual life, everybody knows C.S. Lewis, powerful. God gives us freedom from temptation. In the beginning, He gives us the desire to pray. He's making it easy for us and we're tempted to think, it's all me. We do. We have a tendency to start thinking, man, I'm, this is just great. I've reached spiritual gianthood fast. And then God backs off. And poof. Yep, that was good. I didn't even rehearse that. Bam! It's during these tough times, these tough periods, that you feel forgotten. Much more during the peak periods. It's during these low periods that you're growing. I hope that encourages you today because some of y'all are feeling forgotten and you're forgotten, but not forgotten. You're going through a stage where he's backed off so you can grow more. There, we never quit growing until we take our last breath. If you're comfortable, you're not where you're supposed to be because God's always calling us to be in an uncomfortable place to do things for His glory. Amen. We're not forgotten. 
Even if we feel like we are, we're not. Some of y'all right now know you need to get back up. You need to be doing what God called you to do to begin with. I don't know who you are, but you do. And the last, the last slide is followers are for the forgotten. That's for that other part of y'all, which is a lot less than 50%, because most of us feel forgotten in some way, shape, or form. I shared how I, I've screamed at God. Hello, I'm your servant. I'm still half blind, God. What's going on? Hey, I'm human. I'm just being honest. Amen, Thank you. Glory. Somebody. Everybody's like, oh, I'm not going to go to that church. You don't... <laughs> I feel forgotten, Lord. But I'm down here and I'm realizing this is my time of growth. And that's how I've been an inspiration to other people. Not because of me, but because the Holy Spirit showed me that I should be doing some other things. Things I hadn't done in 30, 40 years. To let my light shine with those people. Try to get somebody to know Jesus on top of the Texas. Her name... I got it wrote down. But I realized after she walked away and when she told me she's from California that she's, she's got some problems. I don't mean that. What I'm saying is just so liberal and just so ungodly anymore, you know, where she's from. But, you know, I was talking about God up there, of course. I was so close to Him. But as followers of Jesus, we're supposed to share with people that feel forgotten. So if you don't feel forgotten, you should be letting them know that God loves the forgotten. He's here for the forgotten. He's the God of and for the forgotten. Some of us don't feel forgotten right now, but you're not sharing with the forgotten. And I guarantee you, just as I said that, God put on your heart an individual in your life that feels forgotten. And you should feel guilty because you are the one that God wants to use. You are the one that God wants to touch that person and let them know that He loves them. That's all you got to do. And since you have felt forgotten in the past, you can relate to that. And you can let them know. Is there someone in your church that has shown God's love to a forgotten person or a group of people? And what impact did it have? This morning at 6 o'clock, <laughs> this is like it was rehearsed for the sermon. I'll close with this. At 6 o'clock I get a private message. Don't know the guy. But the president of the Risen MC was stranded. And this was one of his MC members. And said, uh, hey, uh, I've got a brother in Gatesville that uh, his, he's been pulled over by the cops and his bike's being confiscated. Can you help him? Well, now, I was thinking in the flesh that early in the morning, but I replied in the spirit. Amen? Y'all understand what I'm saying? Sure, I can help him, but my wife's asleep right now, so I was trying to butter him up that it might take a few minutes to go get the president. And anyway, long story short, the cops dropped him off at my house, and we give him a ride to his house. The bikers are a forgotten society. Why'd they call me? Because we, as followers, are supposed to let the forgotten know that they're still loved by Jesus Christ. Amen? Let me say a prayer for him. He's lucky he didn't go to jail. Amen. One person who really got this idea was Mother Teresa. And Mother Teresa, she ministered to lepers like Father Damon did. And they even asked her, they said, they said, what should I do? Should I buy a ticket to go there? And she said, these are so powerful. Mother Teresa said, I know you think you should make a trip to Calcutta, India. But I strongly advise you to save your airfare. Listen to this. This, this is going to touch you. This is a closing. It's easy to love people far away. It's not always easy to love those that live right next to us. Amen. She says, there are thousands of people dying for a piece of bread, but there's even thousands more dying for a bit of love and a little bit of attention. Oh, acknowledgement. So you don't have to move to Calcutta and you don't have to belong to an overseas mission. You just need to do what God wants you to do right here. You can make a change right here within this group right here. I bet some of y'all got a name of somebody else sitting in here that feels forgotten. For the next person in your neighborhood or the next person at your job or school, I'm praying right now, who's the person that you could show up for? Who is the person that you can touch one guy told Mother Teresa, I wouldn't touch a leper for $1,000. And Mother Teresa says, I wouldn't either, but I would touch one for the love of God. Amen. Who are you going to touch today? Let's pray.
Father God, I thank you for such a powerful message, Lord. I pray each and every one of us came here expecting that you've touched us. And Lord, I pray that you've shown us, the ones of us that feel forgotten, that we're not forgotten. Lord, that we feel your compassion. We feel right now, beyond all understanding, the peace and comfort that only you can bring. And Lord, I pray that you bring us out of that, un that, that forgotten state and realize that you really are and have been part of us and that you'll never forget us. And then, Lord, I also pray for all those, those of us that have been going, things have been going great, that you put on our hearts that one individual or more. Maybe it's a group of people. You've given us the wisdom to go talk to them, to go show them the love of Christ, whether it's with a touch, an action, or words. And you give us the courage to follow through and do the things you want us to do today. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. Glory to God. As I said, we're going to go across.